I will show you a couple of demos, one demo, just to make you feel uh, at home and understand my point. Where is the downtime? So here's the code animating a circle view from point A to point B by setting uh, the state every period of time and updating the uh, relative position in order to move the view. It's really simple, it's really good. And if you have an application that only does this thing, animating a circle, you're fine. You have no problem. But in the real world, it's not. It's another issue. Because if we have like normal application that does a lot, that does a lot of work, like sending HTTP requests, they're having computational work, and a lot of uh, side things that JavaScript have to deal with it. So this code in the right side uh, does for the JS thread. Just every one second, do a couple of computations, and that's it. And that's it. Nothing, nothing fancy here. In the meanwhile, that code wants to animate the the circle view here. So let's start start showing what's happening. Ah, sorry. So I will show what's happening here. So what's happening? Is this really? cool for you? No, it's bad user experience, it's not smooth, it's not good, but uh, in some sort of way, let's, let's start analyzing what we're doing here, what happens here. So first, a good assumption here, if you want to do animation, we're targeting 60 frames per second. If you do the, the math and the calculation, you find out that you have a window of 60 milliseconds just to do the animation and the other stuff. Sending HTTP requests, dealing with the response of that request, handling cache, exceptions, and more. So let's start to see what's happening here. First, we set the circle at the beginning, then move it to the next position, next position, it's fine. Ah, there's the stretch job. That's the heavy computation. Maybe I'm talking to the native to compress me an image. Maybe I'm sending a request. There's a heavy work happening in that, in that JavaScript thread. So what you saw with the animation that the circle stuck and then moves, uh, uh, moves from for, next, for the next uh, position where we didn't expect it to be, that's called skip frames. So what happened here in the red, while the JavaScript deal, uh, dealt with that uh, heavy job, it just skipped a lot of frames. So when the animation continues to work, it will start from another position that's not supposed to be there. That's it. So that creates the lag and the, uh, <coughs> the, uh, the unresponsive animation, not smooth animations that we saw. So how are we gonna deal with it? So we overcame this challenge with a little bit concept that we heard about Maybe you heard about, did you hear about declarative programming? Anyone heard? And yeah. So declarative programming. Let's see through what's declarative programming. Pretty fancy words, buzzy words. So let's see what's happening here. So declarative progr programming says that, hey, send me the data. Let's imagine that there is an imaginary engine that was, does the animation. It's fine and good, it's working good, it's always smooth. And we send in the data. What's the data? It's the starting point, end point, and how the interpolating data, how the function of the animation. And that engine will do the work for us. And that engine has a name of main thread when the car is being drawn. So we send an event every 16 milliseconds from that thread, from the main thread to the main thread, which it's okay. It's synchronous, it's fast, it's instant. It's, in, it's instant. And while the JavaScript doing its job, their job, the main thread will take care of animating the view smoothly without any interruption. So, 
declarative programming, how are we going to apply it? So there's a lot of options. Option number one, using the animated library of React Native. There's a, a feature called a flag called use native driver. You can set it through, but it's really limited for a basic animation. It's not customizable. It's really uh, limiting our capabilities of doing animation. And you can go for third-party libraries. That's our solution. You can you can you can go to for third-party libraries like reanimated, interactable, and more libraries, whatever you can, whatever fits your fit your needs. And if you really insist of being co customizable, fully customizable solution, you can write your own view manager, which takes a view. It's really simple. Takes a view, takes the data that we saw early, the starting point, the end point, pass it to the native, to that view manager, which is the native view manager, and we'll do the animation for you. I put here an example, a, a link to a, repo, a repository at Wix, where we uh, show how things is done there. So this is the possible solutions that we got. So this is really was like a not that tough example, because we have a third party libraries, People already done it for us, and if we have really cases that we want to do a custom, really fully customized stuff, we have the way to do it. And hope you will use it. Don't be afraid just to write custom view manager. It's, it's really, it's really simple. It's not that hard, and you can do the animation natively. You uh, and it's the best thing to do is not is using already. Do not reinvent uh, the wheel and use uh, already in uh, solutions. So, since we are talking about JavaScript, JavaScript, we say that it's single-threaded. So, we have one thread that talks to our main thread. So, how is that possible? So, all the data from JavaScript thread to the main thread must, must pass on stairway to hell. So, this is the bridge. Welcome to the bridge. This is the uh, way from uh, the native realm to the JavaScript realm and vice versa. And who knows the bridge here? Who heard about the bridge? And, 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 and. So the bridge itself is like a messenger. The simplest, the simplest form of it, it's like a messenger. It takes the messages from one person, make some magic on it, and pass over to the next one. That's it. It's real simple. It's not that simple. But the bridge itself is asynchronous. We have one thread that dealing with JavaScript code and one thread that is uh, dealing with the, with, the, uh, with the native code. So how things is working? Let me show you a couple of demos. I love to showing people demos because it's real life. It's not just theory. So let me jump on for, the, for this demo. So what you see here is the native Android application written in Java, not JavaScript. And here's the business logic. It just takes a phone number and apply some business logic by formatting it, add, uh, by formatting it and adding um, a dash after the fourth uh, digit. So it's smooth, yeah? Right? It's good. It's fine. Nothing, nothing wrong here. So the whole business logic and the whole showing the numbers on the screen is happening on that main thread. So nothing wrong with it. What about React Native application? Can you spot anything wrong? Can you spot? Did you spot it? How, how many spot the, the, the issue here? So this challenge we are facing like for every day because in a real application or in the uh, on on a Android device like five years old, this is how it's performing. With used devices, it's the same story, but it's a little bit different. So what's happening here? So first of all, the user press on on the number. It happens on the main thread and the native side. 
the Azure site, since it edit text, it will show show it right away and send the message to the JavaScript read, say, hey, I have something changed. Do what do the business logic and return to me. Format it and return to me. So since nothing to do here with the format, the result is the same as what uh, as what what is shown on that edit text view. So let's continue with the with the demo. After the second number, it's okay. The third number, it's fine. And the fourth number, we have the issue. So the four, what ha what's happening here? This, uh, the fourth digit got printed on the screen. We take the business. Uh, we take that number, send it to the JavaScript read via message via the bridge. It takes time since uh, the bridge is serializing the message, deserializing it in order to JavaScript to understand what the message. And after that, we are applying some business logic here in the JavaScript thread, and we got the result back. So a fraction of time, the user sees these, uh, these two uh, values, these two final results, and we don't want that, two final results. So actually, it goes on and on, and that is really bad user experience. So I'm going to share with you another, another real Live uh, example with the same with the same issue. This is the Wix application where you can enter credit card. Did you spot the issue? So aside from beside from loading the knowing the the uh, the logo of that credit card and limiting the numbers and doing that business logic, it's running on, on JavaScript. So put in mind that. Each time you press a button, it will travel to the JavaScript thread, have the logic applied to it, and sends back. You have a couple of milliseconds, and you have to do it in 16 milliseconds if you want to keep in mind that you have to do it in 16 milliseconds if you want to achieve really good animation and smooth application. So let's see another example from the Wix application. Lists. We love lists. How many of you face this issue in their life? <laughs> How many of you try to solve it and, hey, I'm the next Einstein, I will do synchronous list? No one. So I tried. At the first day, I think, Liv, first day, I tried, hey, I can do it. So I didn't know that there's a bridge. So what's happening here? I will explain it in a really simple way. What's happening here? The scroll happening of that main thread. At the beginning, at the beginning, uh, the main thread uh, receives a message that, hey, I'm going to show here like a lot of like one million items. Be prepared. And it will prepare a space for it. And afterward, after each scroll, the mechanism works like that. After each scroll, native side talks to the JavaScript side, hey, give me more that I want to draw. And it takes time, maybe the JavaScript thread is busy doing BI events. It's sending a request, and I don't know, maybe it's loading another module. So in the meantime, nothing is shown as blank screen, and blank items, white items. So what is going on? So this issue actually hard to, to figure out. So how did we overcome it? You have a couple of solutions. First, declarative programming. So moving the business logic to the native side, if it's possible, moving to there, it will save you a lot of headache. And it's not, it's not that uh, hard uh, to move the business logic to there. Uh, maybe writing your customer views and their native and put that native logic and view there. A good use case. If you want to show a gallery of photos, there's a lot of uh, doing there. Loading the images, putting the grids, resize them, and then do the work. And the other thing that Terry will uh, talk to you about in, uh, in, the next, in the next talk is using the new JSI, Java, JavaScript interface, fabric, turbo models, that will replace the bridge maybe, and Terry will elabor uh, elaborate about it more. So here you go, 
we have our possible solution for this issue. At Wix, we use the first two solutions right now. And the last one, it's experimental. We're doing experiments on it. It's not uh, final. But there's one more thing. Remember, I talked about the documentation that I missed, that we have someone called Hermes. And Hermes is a new JavaScript engine which will replace Java, uh, the JavaScript core, uh, hopefully, soon. And what is, what is special about it, it's really mobile first JavaScript engine. It's not for the, dedicated for the web, it's not dedicated for other things, it's just mobile only. So, what it's doing, in a nutshell, it's taking the JavaScript code, compile it, del taking that stages that was in the runtime into the build time. So what does it mean? We're minifying, parsing, compiling the JavaScript code at the build time. We have a lot of time at build time. You can drink a lot of coffee. And at the runtime, it's just executed like any other application. It's just a binary code. That will help you make faster startups in the first place. And it will be, it will take care about, the, it will not load the whole binary file. That's the, uh, that's, uh, that's the main thing. So we hope it will be soon. And Terry will elaborate in you, with you uh, about it uh, like uh, soon, really soon. So thank you and have a nice evening. <laughs>